Welcome to the Right Way Sports Network YouTube channel. My name is Dash, and today I am joined by fellow TWSN analyst Charlie Stone, as we are back with another off-season breakdown. This time we are looking at the Buffalo Bills. The Bills won 13-3 and last year behind stellar play from QB Josh Allen and made it all the way to the AFC Championship game before losing to Kansas City. Alongside Allen on offense is top 10 wide receiver in the league, Stephon Diggs, who complimented Allen extremely well in their first season together. On defense, they're led by young stars on the D-line and veteran DBs, Tredavious White, Micah Hyde, and Jordan Foyer. The Bills have almost everyone from the last season coming back, so look for another division title as well as a run at the Super Bowl. Starting off, we'll look at Josh Allen. He went from 3,000 yards with 20 touchdowns and nine interceptions in 2019 to 4,500 yards with 37 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. To go along with his insane improvement in the pass game, don't forget that he is also one of the better running QBs in the league, logging over 400 yards rushing. He has a cannon of an arm, and if he continues to be a consistently accurate passer, he could once again be an MVP candidate. He's also still on a team-friendly rookie contract, with a cap hit of only about $7 million in 2021. The Bills also signed Mitch Trubisky as a backup this offseason, which provides a decent level of security in case Allen gets injured. While Trubisky isn't necessarily a starting caliber quarterback, he is pretty good for a backup. At the running back spot this year, the Bills look to have a running back by committee type of approach. Last season, their leading rusher, Devin Singletary, had under 700 yards. If it weren't for the 400-plus Josh Allen contributed, they would have had the fewest rushing yards as a team in the NFL. This year, they add more big play upside in bringing Matt Breida over, who should complement Devin Singletary and second-year player Zach Moss well, who have more of a downhill running style. In my opinion, the best player on this Bills offense, though, is Stephon Diggs. After acquiring Diggs from the Vikings with draft picks, he made an immediate impact. In his first year having Josh Allen throwing him the ball, Diggs led the league in catches and receiving yards, putting up crazy numbers of 127 catches and over 1,500 yards. There was no stopping Diggs. While I expect his numbers to drop a little bit, he should have another monster season in 2021. Someone who has been in the public eye a lot this offseason is slot receiver Cole Beasley. Logging over 80 catches and nearly 1,000 yards last season, Beasley was an integral part of this Bills quick passing game. He could definitely produce again in 2021 if the Bills continue to air the ball out like they did in 2020. After signing a one-year $6 million deal, Emmanuel Sanders will be making his way to Buffalo. A good wide receiver in the NFL for a long time, Sanders is nearing the end of his career. Coming over from the Saints, he logged over 700 yards in 2020, but will likely see a smaller role in Buffalo. While he can still provide value for the offense, he could end up wide receiver four. A young guy who may end up ahead of him on the depth chart, the second-year player and former fourth-round pick, Gabriel Davis. In his rookie year, he showed that he can be a deep threat for years to come. Allen found him for seven touchdowns, and as Davis matures, this could be a special connection for the Bills going forward. And now I'm going to talk about the Buffalo Bills offensive line. One of the reasons Josh Allen took such a big leap last year was the protection his offensive line provided for him, starting out at the tackle spot. You have Daryl Williams holding down the right tackle spot, who was stellar last year. In over 1,000 snaps, he only allowed three sacks and had an 80 grade from PFF. With a 78 in both pass and run blocking from PFF, Daryl Williams joins an elite group of right tackles, including Lane Johnson, Jack Conklin, and Ryan Ramchick to do this in the last two seasons. Next, talking about the left tackle spot. Deion Dawkins is also another strong, strong player for this Buffalo Bills offense. He anchors this offensive line and is clearly their best offensive lineman. Deion Dawkins is a 6'5", 320-pound left tackle who is reliable as a run and pass protector. Recently, Buffalo extended Deion Dawkins to a four-year, $60 million contract. He'll be the cornerstone left tackle for this team for many years to come. Next, when looking at this offensive line, there's a clear step down from the tackle to guard spot. At the left guard position, John Feliciano holds it down. He's a 29-year-old guard who offers versatility to play both guard and center for Buffalo. He had a 64 grade last year, which is good for the 38th best guard in the NFL. While this is not great, it is solid on the inside. Next, looking inside at the center spot. Mitch Morris is the second highest paid center in the entire NFL. While the veteran center has been good the majority of his career, 
Recently, his play has been on the decline. Next is Cody Ford, the second-year player out of Oklahoma. In my opinion, he is the weakest link on this Buffalo Bills offensive line. And although he has had his struggles, Buffalo still has him in their plans for the future. He had a tough ending the last season with a torn meniscus, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Brandon Bean bring in some competition at offensive guard, as he has done in recent years, and is not necessarily to replace Ford, but rather bring out the best in him through a competition battle. All in all, this offense has dynamic playmakers behind a good O-line as they look poised to put up gaudy offensive numbers. On the defensive side of the ball, the Bills were pretty much middle of the pack in every major category except for turnover creation. They were top seven in both interceptions and fumbles as they have playmakers at all levels of the defense. As Dash stated, the Bills were mediocre on the defensive line last season. Jerry Hughes, remains as Buffalo's best pass rusher, and he is heading into the final year of his contract at 33 years old in August. Same goes with Mario Addison, as he is signed through 2022, but will be 34 in September, and he is tied for the Bills' lead with five sacks. When looking on the inside, Ed Oliver and star Latulale, who opted out of 2020 due to COVID, is expected to return. Of that group, Oliver is considered a threat as a pass rusher, but needs to start proving it after Buffalo picked him as a top 10 pick. Then looking at the incoming players on this Buffalo defensive line. In the most recent NFL draft, their first and second round picks went to Gregory Rousseau and Boogie Basham, who are both defensive ends, which means they'll be battling each other for playing time. Both of these players can get after the quarterback, and I'm excited to see what versatility they will bring to this Buffalo defensive line. When looking at linebackers, Tremaine Edmonds holds down the middle for this Buffalo defense. He has 322 career tackles in three years and five and a half sacks and has been solid for the middle. I could see him as a building block for this defense going forward. The Bills' strongest group on defense is their secondary, led by all-pro cornerback Tredavious White. White has 15 interceptions in his young four-year career with the Bills, and he's only missed three games in those four years. For the last two seasons, he's been a top-tier cornerback. But joining him in the secondary is one of the league's best safety duos, Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer. Going into his ninth season, Hyde has forced 21 turnovers and become a solid tackler as well. As for Poyer, he has really blossomed since coming to Buffalo back in 2017. Since then, he's missed only one game and forced 19 turnovers. With a strong back end, playmakers at linebacker and along the D-line, This defense should be at least average once again. Due to the high-powered nature of the Buffalo Bills offense and the strength of this defense, their best bet will be to get out to quick starts and force their opponents to pass the ball in a game of catch-up. I see the Bills winning between 13 and 15 games this season, barring any major injuries. I'm going to agree with you there, Dash. I see the Bills winning the AFC East and getting around 13 wins this season. And not only that, but look for them to make a deep playoff run in the AFC this year. Thank you all for tuning in to our breakdown of this Buffalo Bills team. I hope you all enjoyed. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe to the TWSN YouTube channel. Also, make sure you check out our app. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, I'm at Dash Pedersen on Twitter. Charlie is at Charlie Stone with two underscores. Peace out.